Hello, my name is Raraj Darius Buhai, and I am presenting the paper Empirical Study of the Benefits of Overparametrization in Learning Latent Variable Models. This is joint work with Yoni Halpern, Yoon Kim, Andrei Risteski, and David Zonta. Overparametrization is a phenomenon that has been studied more and more in the last decade. In this work, by overparametrization we mean training a larger model than necessary to represent the distribution of the data. That is, the distribution of the data can also be described by a model with fewer parameters. Overparametrization is ubiquitous in supervised learning, where larger neural networks make optimization easier often without sacrificing generalization. The phenomenon is reasonably well studied. For example, in practice, the seminal paper by Zhang from 2016 showed that commonly used neural networks are so large that they can learn randomized labels. Also from a theoretical point of view, a series of recent papers showed that overparametrized neural networks provably learn and generalize for certain classes of functions. Overparametrization is much less studied in unsupervised learning. In this paper, we focus on the task of learning latent variable models. Then, our title says it all. We conduct an empirical study of the benefits of overparametrization in learning latent variable models. A latent variable model is a model that contains both observed and unobserved or latent variables. For example, in the picture on the right, age is a latent variable and x is an observed variable. Typically, we know the joint distribution of x and age. Here, it is p of x and age parametrized by theta. Given samples of x, the task is to learn the parameter theta. One approach is to find the maximum likelihood estimate of theta. However, for most latent variable models of interest, maximum likelihood estimation is intractable. Then, a tractable approach is to use iterative algorithms, such as expectation maximization or variational learning. These algorithms are not guaranteed to reach a global optimum, but only a local optimum. Nevertheless, they often give good results in practice. They typically work as follows. First, start with a guess of theta. Second, we infer age from x given the current guess of theta. And finally, we update theta to increase the joint probability of x and age. Typically, this step only takes a gradient step with respect to theta. Then, we continue all these steps until convergence. All the learning algorithms in our paper are such iterative algorithms. Our experiments are conducted in a synthetic setting. There exists a ground truth model from which we generate samples. In the picture on the right, you can see the typical model that we study. There is a layer of latent variables which, through some probabilistic transformation, generates a layer of observed variables. Here, each latent variable is colored according to the parameters associated with it. That is, according to the effect that it has on the observed variables. The task is to learn a model from samples generated from the ground truth model. In our experiments, the learned model is from the same family as the true model, but it may have a different number of latent variables. If it has the true number of latent variables, we call it non-overparameterized. If it has a larger number, we call it overparameterized. We say that a ground truth latent variable is recovered if there exists a learned latent variable with the same associated parameters. Clearly, we want to recover as many ground truth latent variables as possible. In that way, the learned model is closer to the true model. Then, the main question we investigate is, how does overparametrization affect the recovery of ground truth latent variables? We find that with overparametrization, the learned model recovers the ground truth latent variables more often than without overparametrization. The pictures on the right show what we mean. There, a non-overparametrized model recovered only one true latent variable, but an overparametrized model recovered all three true latent variables. In case you are wondering, in the overparametrized model, the unmatched latent variables are typically redundant. They do not have an influence on the observed variables. In our papers, 
we demonstrate this benefit of overparameterization through extensive experiments with noisy or network models, sparse coding models, and neural probabilistic context-free grammar models. In the rest of this presentation, we will focus mostly on noisy or networks. Noisy or networks consist of a layer of latent variables and a layer of observed variables. All the variables are binary. Each latent variable has a prior probability pi. With probability pi, the latent variable becomes one. Suppose there is a connection between this latent variable and an observed variable with failure probability f. Then, if the latent variable is one, it also makes the observed variable one, but fails to do so with probability f. If multiple latent variables have such connections, then the observed variable is essentially an or operation between them, but noisy due to the failure probabilities. Finally, each observed variable has a noise probability L. With probability L, the observed variable becomes one independently of everything else. Here is an example of an image model that we actually use in our experiments. The observed variables are arranged in an eight by eight grid representing an eight by eight image. The latent variables are connected to the observed variables according to certain shapes, which are shown in the first layer. Then, a sample from the model is typically a noisy OR of some of these shapes, of course, depending on which latent variables are one. An example of a sample is highlighted in red. To learn a noisy OR network means to learn its parameters, that is, to learn all the parameters pi, f, and l. To learn a noisy OR network, we use variational learning. The model that we want to learn, p of x and h, parameterized by theta, is itself a noisy OR network. As mentioned before, we can choose this model to have as many latent variables as we want. We also need to define a recognition network, also known as an inference network. This is q of h given x, parameterized by phi. In our experiments, Q is either a logistic regression model or an independent Bernoulli model. Then, to learn, we maximize the evidence lower bound, alternating between gradient steps with respect to uh, theta and phi. This is standard practice in variational learning. For each of our experiments, we learn a noisy OR network, and then we count how many ground truth latent variables were recovered. On this slide, we show the results for the image model mentioned before. Recall that the ground truth has eight latent variables. Then, on the x-axis, we show the number of latent variables of the learned model. In the left graph, on the y-axis, we show how many true latent variables are recovered. And in the right graph, on the y-axis, we show the percentage of runs in which all true latent variables are recovered. The important observation is that, in both graphs, the second data point is much higher than the first. That is, learning with 16 latent variables is much better than with eight. We show now the results for five data sets. These are IMG, PLNT, and so on. For each data set, the ground truth has eight latent variables. Then, the graphs have the same meaning as before. On top, we show how many true latent variables are recovered, and on the bottom, the percentage of runs with full recovery. As you can see, the trends are similar for all data sets. Learning with 16 latent variables is better than with eight. Furthermore, as we increase the overparameterization, the performance often continues to increase. Also note that the harm of extreme overparameterization is minor. Even with 128 latent variables, the performance is always much better than with eight latent variables. Finally, we remarked that similar trends also hold if we measure the held out log likelihood of the learned model. Our second observation is that when the ground truth is recovered, the unmatched latent variables are typically discarded or duplicates. Shown here are the latent variables recovered when learning a model with 16 latent variables on the image dataset. One of the true latent variables is duplicated, highlighted in red. The remaining latent variables either have high failure probabilities or low prior probabilities, so they do not influence the observed variables. This observation allows us to design a simple filtering step to recover the ground truth latent variables from the output of our algorithm. First, 
eliminate the latent variables with low priors or high failures. And second, eliminate the latent variables that are duplicates. Then, it is possible to reliably recover the ground truth without knowing it. Our results do not change much with variations to the learning algorithm. In particular, changing the batch size from 20 to 1,000 or changing the recognition network from logistic regression to independent Bernoulli does not have a large effect. This suggests that the benefits of overparametrization are general when learning latent variable models with iterative algorithms. This is reinforced by our experiments with sparse coding and neural PCFG. These results raise the question, what makes overparametrization beneficial? A hypothesis is that with overparametrization, more latent variables are initialized close to ground truth latent variables. Then, the benefit is due to a warm start. That is, the latent variables that are close to true variables quickly converge to them. In fact, the learned latent variables do not quick converge quickly to ground truth latent variables. In the beginning, many latent variables are undecided, and throughout the optimization process, latent variables often contend for true latent variables. This suggests that a worm start hypothesis is not a sufficient explanation. In more detail, we show now the state of the latent variables at three moments of the first epoch of a successful run. In the beginning, many of the latent variables contain mixtures of shapes. For example, the latent variable highlighted in orange is a mixture of a square shape and a diamond shape. These latent variables are therefore undecided. Moreover, some latent variables contend for the same true latent variables, as highlighted in red. Contentions continue throughout the optimization process. We show here the latent variables after 10, 20, and 30 epochs. As highlighted in red, two latent variables contend for the diamond-shaped latent variable and even split it between themselves until, after a long time, one of them wins and converges. Therefore, the optimization process is far from stable. This concludes our discussion of noisier networks. We also perform similar experiments in sparse coding models and neural probabilistic context-free grammar models. For sparse coding, we have a linear model with synthetic experiments and training with a linear alternating minimization algorithm. For neural PCFG, we have a non-linear model with semi-synthetic experiments with a neural network parametrization. That is, we train a model on a text corpus and then we generate samples according to it. Then, the training is done with a form of EM, again with a neural network parametrization. In both cases, overparametrization gives better recovery. However, in the neural PCFG case, recovery of the latent variables themselves is challenging. So we measure recovery with a similarity metric between parse trees. On the other hand, in the sparse coding case, recovery is easy, and we can also design a simple filtering step to recover the true latent variables from the output of the algorithm. Overall, our evidence suggests that overparametrization is beneficial to ground truth recovery in learning latent variable models. Why is any of this surprising? We know that, typically, smaller models are more likely to be identifiable so, naively, we would expect them to be easier to learn. However, our experiments show something more subtle, that larger models make optimization easier and furthermore have an inductive bias toward ground truth recovery. As an application, our observations can be useful for practice, that is, it is helpful to overparametrize, and they can also be useful for guiding theory. That is, we highlight an interesting phenomenon that may provide important insights into learning and optimization. A direction for future work is to explore overparametrization in larger and more complex models, such as commonly used deep generative models. Some challenges in that direction include understanding model identifiability, defining overparametrization, which could also mean more layers or larger layers, and defining ground truth recovery and designing filtering steps which we expect to be more challenging. Thank you for listening. Our code is available at the link provided in the slides.